Hey, Talking Your Life's Math and History, and we're going to be learning about sine, cosine, and tangent. So in this video, we're going to understand what they mean, and we're also going to understand why do they apply in the real world. But, before we start learning about sine, cosine, and tangent, we gotta understand the Pythagorean Theorem first, because Pythagorean Theorem only works with right triangles, and sine, cosine, and tangent will usually work with a right triangle. The formula for Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared is going to equal c squared. Your c squared is going to be the longest line of the right triangle, or the longest line for the side of the right triangle. That is called your hypotenuse, and it's abbreviated as HYP. So, with sine, cosine, and tangent, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding out what their formula is, and we're also going to try them out. So, let's start with... So, here is a right triangle. The hypotenuse is 5, one of the legs is 4, and the other leg is 3. So, when we do the Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to equal 5 squared. So, this is definitely a right triangle. And... The combination with 5, 4, and 3 is actually the most famous combination for Pythagorean Theorem. There are many other combinations, but this is the most famous one. So, let's see what the formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent is. For sine, the formula for that is going to be... The sine is going to be the opposite... Divide that by the hypotenuse. And not only our triangle has numbers, but each side of the triangle has its very own name. Because we said earlier that the longest line of the triangle is called our hypotenuse. Right over here, which is the height, is going to be called our opposite. The reason why is because these formulas that we're doing, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having that x right there, and some of them actually try to find what, how, what that angle is, like wh how wide that angle is. So the opposite is going to be the opposite side of the angle. So if you're standing right here and the opposite right there, you're viewing the opposite to this direction. The bottom length is going to be called the adjacent. Because the adjacent, the bottom one, is going to be right next to the opposite. Just like here's a square and here's another square. They're both adjacent to each other. So the bottom length is called the adjacent. With sine, it's going to be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So it's going to be 4 divided by 5. And if you want that as a decimal, you're going to get an answer of 0.80. That's what sine is. Sine is actually used in the real world when you're calculating the height or the distance of something. Sine can actually be used in a GPS. So you can get to your destination fast and safely. So that's why we use sine in real life. Now let's move on to cosine. Cosine is just like sine, but what we're trying to be finding is a bit different. The formula for cosine is the cosine is going to equal the adjacent, which is the bottom length, Divide that by the hypotenuse. So, when we do that, the cosine is this bottom line. Divide that by 
this gigantic ramp line, or the hypotenuse. So we're going to have 3 over 5. And if you want that as a decimal, you get 0 0.60. That is the formula for cosine. The reason why we use cosine in the real world is because cosine is used for NASA and spaceflight. So NASA and these other space companies will use cosine to find the trajectory and the flight path of the International Space Station and other spacecraft. The cosine is capable of finding what the missing information of a right triangle is. Destination Earth. Hey, sir. Sorry to bother you. Uh, one of our offsite drop pods is on a direct collision course with the station. What? Three, two, point one, two. Now comes my favorite, the tangent. So, the formula for tangent is going to be the opposite, which is this line, the height, the opposite divided by the adjacent, which is this bottom line. So, with tangent, when we do opposite divided by adjacent, or we do 4 over 3, or 4 divided by 3, we're going to get a decimal as 1.333 repeating. That is if you turn 4 over 3 into a decimal. And with tangent, we usually use that in the real life to solve the hypotenuse. And what we gotta do in that hypotenuse is to find the slope of a hypotenuse. So if you put this right triangle on a graph and you're trying to find the slope of the hypotenuse, using the tangent is the perfect way of doing it. And with tangent, tangent is gonna be a sister equation to y equals mx plus b because y equals mx plus b is what we call the formula for slope. And since we're trying to find the slope of the hypotenuse by finding the tangent, they're pretty similar. But the only difference is that you can find the tangent and the slope of the hypotenuse without a graph. When you are doing y equals mx plus b, usually your math teacher will tell you to graph something, or graph this slope, or this line. So with y equals mx plus b, you need to graph to find the slope. And with the tangent, there is no graph required to use. What we can do about these three formulas, sine, cosine, and tangent, is in trigonometry, these are perfect for finding the information you need for a right triangle. A good way to memorize these formulas and sine, cosine, and tangent, there is an acronym that can be very funny and can be very helpful. It's called SOKATOA! So, SO is for sine, Ka is for cosine, and tangent is for toa. For sine, the formula is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So, so ka toa can be very, very helpful to memorize. Magma. 
These are perfect for finding the information you need for a right triangle. If there's any information that's missing, like let's say if this right here is missing. So what we can do that is we can use sine, cosine, and tangent to find out how many degrees or how wide that degrees is for that angle is. So these are really helpful for finding the missing information in a right triangle. Thank you for watching Tao Pingu Lies Math Industry. Like and subscribe. And to end the video, let's see what Captain Magma does when he tries to fight the evil. <laughs>